So the end of Season 2 at Crystal Palace is here. We are taking on FC United for the final match of the season, a chance for us to reach 132 points and further extend our record at the top. One last game against our old club, as well as that we are going to talk about this year and a look forward to the summer transfer window where the budgets have been set. Oh my word, £136 million transfer budget, about £800,000 in the wage budget, I have no idea how I'm going to spend all this money. I mean, that's a lie. I do have some ideas, but that's a lot of money. Oh, the summer can't come soon enough. <laughs> Yes, folks, how is it going? And welcome back. This is episode number 11 here with Crystal Palace, the end of season number two, what has ultimately been a rather weird year. A year where I've perhaps had my most dominant season I can ever remember as an English football club managing in any league in England. Genuinely, the kind of quality that we've shown versus everyone else has kind of been mind blowing. The goals have been flowing, at the back, we've been solid. And well, you can see the fruits of our labours here. We are top of the table. Three draws, 42 wins, a chance to complete the unbeaten season today. Hopefully, we're not going to lose against an FC United team that, well, if we beat kind of 8-0, uh, they could still go down. Hopefully, that won't happen. Now, the observant amongst you will notice that we're not back here for any FA Cup action. That was a possibility as of last episode when, of course, we had the EFL Cup final. If you didn't see that, Go watch it. I, I had a breakdown halfway through. It was a great time. Um, unfortunately for us in the FA Cup, we lost to Leeds United in the quarterfinals. They were eighth in the Premier League. I did consider coming back and doing this as a match, but at the end of the day, I knew that we were going to have even more big games if we made it further, the semi-final and the final. And with kind of how this season's played out, I felt quite eager to get to the Premier League, and I'm sure you probably feel the same. So, yeah, we didn't do this game. Kind of glad I didn't do it because we lost in the 88th minute. Esposito with the goal. Um, it was not a good day at the office. We weren't very unfortunate. I will argue that we outplayed Leeds United, the team who right now, I think they were eighth in the Premier League. Are they still eighth? They are still eighth in the Premier League. Um, we outplayed them away from home. That gives me a lot of optimism for next year. If you're wondering, by the way, how the league table's looking... Newcastle United have just won the league for the first time in this save game with their very rich owner. Of course, Everton have a tycoon owner in this save game. They finished third. Liverpool, with Erling Haaland, who is top goal scorer in the league, look like they might miss out on European football this year. Uh, yeah, the status quo in England is kind of been shaken up here. It's been a, a weird year. As for league form since we last here, we've won every game. There isn't much more to it other than that. Uh, since the EFL Cup game, we beat Crewe, Huddersfield, Plymouth, Sunderland, Preston. Loads and loads of convincing performances. Not maybe as many clean sheets as I would like to see. And then in the last month or so, we've started to get a few more clean sheets, actually. Wins against Wigan. Ipswich Town gave us a little bit of a scare, but 3-2. Um, was still relatively convincing, even if it did take an 84th minute goal to get us the win there. We then beat Sheffield Wednesday 5-0. Brighton, our kind of rivals, we beat 3-1, which is always good to see. Reading, we beat 2-0. And FC United, who I've already talked about, we play today. Worth noting, they've changed their manager. Now, Derek Sinclair, who was the man who replaced me, left FC United to go to Preston North End, who well, could be relegated on the final day. That is such a weird move for him to leave at the end of the season, you know, right towards the end and go to a relegation rival. But the fact he was willing to do it probably gives you an idea of where FC United are at in terms of reputation. Their new manager, as you can see here, formerly manager of Tranmere, Sheffield Wednesday, MK Dons and Stevenage before that. James Wilson-Brown, um, I hope you can keep FC United up today, but don't think I'm going easy on you. Uh, I want to win and score lots of goals. And I suppose another thing that I would like to do is try and get Gorazaga top goal scorer. He's not in the golden boot position yet, but he's only one goal behind Vera, who's the Wolf striker. So yeah, we're going to do our best to get Gorazaga the golden boot today. Uh, he is going to play for us uh, in what is pretty much a full strength team for this final game of the year. In fact, you can see the team here. We have no injuries. That's a lie. McDonald's got a minor injury, but we've got no injuries except McDonald's minor injury, which means we are at full strength. This is the team that we're going to go with. Gorazaga, of course, in on loan from Liverpool. Have been looking to sign him. 
Liverpool want kind of £80 million for him. And I'll be honest, I'm really strongly considering it. He's just been so good for us this year. 32 goals, 13 assists. The vast majority of those coming when he's played out in the wide area as well. Within this system that we've been playing this year, the inside forwards just produce so, so many goals. And, uh, well, I'd like to keep Gorazaga around. Certainly, if he is going to play his final game today for us, which we did think was going to be the case last season, I'd like to see him get top goal scorer in the league. So, yeah, let's hope we can have a good performance. The team, very, very standard. No nonsense. I want to end the season on a high. I'm expecting this to be a relatively event-free match from the perspective of we should win it comfortably. But, of course, we want to see how the season ends for our team. And we want to see if Gorazaga can get the golden boot whilst... FC United battle to stay up. And, uh, well, our old friend, Butterworth, has just given away a penalty. I'm changing the penalty taker to Gura Jagger. That's how seriously I'm taking this mission to get him the golden boot. I feel like he's earned this opportunity and we've got to do everything in our power to give him a chance to get do it. He steps up, he hits it. Great penalty, bottom corner, 1-0. Lovely to see Butterworth give it away. Thank you, old pal. We move. I don't know if this necessarily bodes well for FC United. It's now the third minute of the game and we're on the attack again. There is another highlight playing. We have the ball with Omar Richards to Silva to Omar Bamidele. Tullio, lovely build-up play here. Can we have a bit of an end product at the end of this passing play? Tullio, Manny Kone plays it through up forward to Gorishagu's who's tackled, but it falls to Middleby and, well, he has found the bottom corner. It's 2-0. I feel like the last game of every season for the last three seasons in a row has ended up being a blowout. This feels like it's going to be another one of those games where we just stop showing the highlights after a couple of goals. We've been all over FC United in the early phases. A degree of fortune about it falling to middle B, but once the chance presented itself, it was a very good finish at the end of it. By the way, if you were just wondering about the FC United team, they've got Butterworth in their team, Darren Richards still, Nesbitt, uh, Ferreira is in goal. Uh, but the rest of the team is actually changed. So I'm only really recognising three or four first team players from our time there. Of course, that was a, just over a year and a half ago now, really, in terms of season length. Um, I think it's not quite 18 months by calendar year. Uh, but it's weird to see just how much of it has changed. I'm also kind of glad we've stopped scoring goals. I did mention it. There is a slim possibility that if we hammered FC United by enough today, they could still go down. Uh, I, I, that would be awful if it happened. It, but, but, but don't think I'm going easy. I'm not going easy on them. We're playing to score as many as we can. As Gurujaga is going to get it forward here, kind of want him to be the man in the box getting the chance, not the man in the wide area trying to put in the ball. But to be fair, any goals would be good. As Omar Richards brings it forward. Omar Richards, by the way, six assists this season. The fullbacks haven't got that many this season. And uh, was that about pass? That, but I, thought, I thought that was their defender. Maybe that was Gurujagu who hit it. Either way, after two goals inside the first four minutes, it's uh, it's now only 2-0. Nothing happened for the next 40. I'm pleased. We've created loads more of the same. We've got an XG above three. I feel like the goals are overdue. The goals are going to come. Gurujagu whips it in. Tullio can't quite get there, but it's cleared away only as far as Henia. He's going to get it back into the box to Silva, the Peruvian prince, as I've started calling him. Um, I, I feel like that's a nickname that's going to stick. Couldn't quite get there at the back post. And now, actually, Williams bringing it forward for FC United. Oh, Bamidele wins the header well. Now we look to work the space. Now we look to knock the ball around. There's a confidence and a swagger with us in possession here. Henia dropping deep, plays the ball over to De Silva. It's a searching pass. He's then going to play it to Gorazaga, who heads it in on goal. That's goal number 39 of the season for him in all competitions. Obviously, we don't know what's going on in the Wolves game, but he has got the two goals there that he would maybe need to get the golden boot and be the top goal scorer. And again, we see the strength there of the inside forwards playing on the side of their stronger foot. We saw it in the cup final with Gurajaga assisting De Silva. You've now seen the opposite. Um, I'm certainly not someone who buys into the idea that if you've got a left-footed player, they have to play on the right-hand side as an inside forward. I do think it can work with them playing on the side of their stronger foot. And in fact, it comes with benefits a bit like that there, where you see balls played in that a player probably wouldn't be able to pull off with their weaker foot. And well, De Silva could have a chance there. Couldn't beat the keeper at the near post. It was parried around well. 65 minutes played. I have just made a couple of changes, bringing in some youngsters for game time. Uh, Mateev at left back, Santiago at centre mid, and also Severin 
coming in and playing at centre attack in mid. Henier had been a little bit quiet there, so a chance for them to get a few more minutes under their belt for development. And well, hopefully they can be involved in the play here. As Santiago tries to play into the box, it's cleared away. Only as far as Severin. And while well, Gurajag goes through, he finishes it, but it's offside. It's not going to be goal number 40 for the season. I do believe, actually, with the goals he's got today, he's now broken the Crystal Palace record for goals in the season that was previously in this save game held by Kelechi Ihinacho. So that's pretty cool to see. Of course, we don't know for certain that he's going to be getting the golden boot in the league, so I am going to just encourage him to continue to go forward, to continue to try and get goal goals for us in what remains. Well, FC United clear it away, but we're going to look to for bring forward the ball once more. Omobamidele, Santiago, Severin. I feel like over the course of 18 months, Omobamidele is slowly becoming more natural in my vocabulary, although I don't think I'm saying it correctly. But I'm try I am trying. It's a difficult name to say quickly. I feel like I have got better at it. Anyway, we uh, still have the ball here, although we're not really doing anything with it. And now Nesbitt, our former man, Granty boy, can he finish it? He never scored those one-on-ones for us. That was, that, that was not a chance he ever scored when I was manager. That's, you know, I don't like it. In fact, I'm so annoyed about it. I'm not showing the replay. I've skipped it. I'm just going to sulk now. Five minutes left. Gurajaga looking for the hat trick. Plays it forward to De Silva. Options in the middle queuing up. He pulls it to Severin who forces a save out the keeper. Gurajaga out in the wide area. Can't quite pull it back. Really good opportunity for the Polish Haaland to get on the ball and get on the score sheet there. Unfortunately, he's been denied. But there may still be further chances because Severin has it. Plays forward Middleby who's going to battle for the ball. Mohamed is going to be given a second yellow card there. It might be kind of inconsequential, but I am going to go and attack him for the last four minutes. And despite going on attacking with them down a man, nothing happened to end the game. A 3-1 win, though, should mean that we are, well, top of the league. We already were. But it should also mean that FC United are safe. And indeed, we have confirmation FC United finishing on 49 points. Unfortunately, their manager, Sinclair, who left to go to Preston North End, not going to be relegated. That would have been quite poetic justice, I feel like. But as far as FC United are concerned, that's still a pretty successful season. As for ourselves, well, of course, we're not FC United a manager. From our perspective, it's been a successful season too. We have romped through this league. It's been very, very convincing throughout. The big question is, did Gurajaga get top goal scorer? And the answer is, he did. Vera couldn't get the goals on the final day, although... Wolves are still in the playoffs. If he scores goals in the playoffs, do they count in the overall goal scoring? I feel like they shouldn't. That would actually be crap if they did. That might be how it works, though, now that I think about it. I feel like I've not really made enough of it. We've just gone unbeaten in the season. We've just done the Invincibles achievement in Football Manager with Crystal Palace. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this is one of the most dominant seasons I've ever had in an English league. And I think, obviously, part of that is the recruitment I feel like we were able to get in so many talented strikers that even if we were maybe lacking a little bit at the back, just our general ability on the ball, especially going forward and in the final third on the ball, um, just meant that we put teams to the sword. You know, you look at a player like De Silva, there's not many championship teams that I've ever seen in football manager. Never mind ones that I've actually managed who could spend £44 million on a transfers listed Liverpool striker. And whilst De Silva did come in, having only played something like 44 career matches. I think he had more international games than games at club level. He's come in this year and played 35 games, got 18 goals, 14 assists. I'd argue he's justified the price tag, especially as a positive influence in the dressing room. But of course, with all the recruitment we've had, it was always kind of the expectation that we would go up comfortably. Not even I could have envisaged that we would do it quite as comfortably as we have. Obviously, we've spent big in a lot of different areas. But I do feel like every single player that we brought in really has done well. And I mean, Graham Franklin here, labelled as signing of the season. 17 matches played in all competitions. 16 starts in 46 league games. That does give you an idea of how, as the season progressed, we did really start to rotate the team. I feel like for the first 10 or so games, there was this nerviness where I wasn't quite sure exactly how good we were. Once I felt confident in the players, we started to rotate things more continue to get good results and so it kind of fueled itself this desire to well play a load of youngsters in the team and give them game time and Franklin's developed off the back of it I have really high hopes for him England under 21 international 
We don't have a whole load of English players in our team. He is a man I would like to make kind of an integral part of our defence. I'm hoping he's, of course, going to continue to elevate his level and actually end up being Premier League quality. In terms of transfers out, of course, we sold players for significant sums of money. That is one of the reasons why our transfer budget is so big coming into this season. Um, yeah, we got rid of so many players. Uh, Gear gone left for 20 million. Eze only got 6.5 million for him, but got the wages off the books. Uh, Ode, 42.5 million. Torres, 15.5 million. Uh, Abdi, 18.5 million. Luan, 17.5 million. I don't think I even mentioned him getting sold in January, but I just sold Jordan Hackett because he was just complaining a load and all the youngsters that I was playing in the defence were doing better than him. But yeah, we managed to get some pretty good sums of money. And of course, the big challenge, I suppose, this coming year is going to be to reinvest that smartly and we'll work towards whatever the board's expectations are. I, I still don't know what those expectations are for next year. I mean, we know that in three years, they want to be challenging for the Premier League title. I would imagine they want at least a top half finish for this coming year. I mean, the good news is it was a B. Um, the overall board confidence is now an A minus. So with the board who I absolutely can't please with anything, um, you know, we have gone up in their estimations. They do actually think we're OK, which I think is nice. Of course, revenue is always going to drop with us going out of the Premier League, but still very, very healthy sums of money. Given the fact that we've got a super wealthy owner, there's all these coincidental sponsorships that come from foreign kind of Chinese companies loosely related to our owner that always seem to, you know, just solve any financial pitfalls we fall into. It's one of the, one of the advantages of being owned by a tycoon, these mysterious sponsorships you get. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we see more of them next season. I did also achieve one thing that I don't think I've ever achieved before, and it's not really a thing you go for. I think we won Manager of the Month every single season, or every single month for the season. I mean, yeah, it was with it was with Crystal Palace, a very good Crystal Palace team. I still feel like that's pretty cool as far as achievements go. Fans Player of the Year was Goran Zaga. I think we have got to look to sign him permanently. Uh, he did also win Young Player of the Season. Signing of the Season went to Graham Franklin. Goal of the Season went to Severin. Uh, I think that would have been the chipped goal. He scored a few really good goals, actually, over the course this year. Top goal scorer for us was Gorozhaga. He also got the most assists with 20 and the most player of the matches. I think you're beginning to kind of see why I'm strongly considering the possibility of actually spending £70 million on him. He's absolutely rapid. He's great with the ball at his feet. He's great in the wide areas. He's been here for two years and really settled down. My only concern really is that Liverpool signed him for 2.2 million. So if I kind of, I suppose, just take the hit and spend the money that Liverpool want for him, they are making a load of profit. And especially if they finish outside the European spots, maybe I can get him for a cheaper price. Although that could be a dangerous game to wait, kind of, you know, waiting for the summer before trying to make a move for him. Let me know, would you be going for Gurajaka now? Am I mad that I'm hesitating? Is he worth the 70 million? I think he's probably worth it. I think he probably is. Our captain De Silva hails me for the unbeaten season. I love you too, Juan Pablo. Um, I feel like me and Juan Pablo are going to go on holiday together in the summer to celebrate. We've we've got a good relationship going. Um, you can see here, overall best 11, Gorazaga has been inducted in, which is really, really cool to see. 89 appearances over the last two years, 61 goals, a 7.63 rating for him. In terms of the season review, I mean, it's one of the best seasons I've ever had in the championship. And whilst I expected us to do well, I couldn't have imagined we would do quite this well. I'm concerned that we've done so well that the board are now going to really, really start to complain and, you know, up the expectations that little bit more to the point where I'm kind of scared to click on this. But let's see what they want. Oh, boy. Uh... End of next season, qualify for the Champions League. They want a top four finish next year. I'll be honest. That's going to be really hard. <laughs> top four. That's not a typo. They want top four. One thing I did totally forget to mention earlier on in the video, which feels important to mention now, is I have just been able to agree a new contract with the club. Uh, for a further four seasons. Originally, it was going to end at the end of next year. That should give me a little bit of job security, although because I'm only being paid £11,000 a week, the actual compensation that the owner would have to pay to get rid of me 
really is a drop in the ocean. Top four next season. I mean, to anyone who's been complaining that this season has been a bit straightforward and a bit easy, next year is going to be difficult. I go have a cry. I now have to have an end of season team meeting. Now, normally with these, I do whatever the board's expectation is. I feel like that's going to be way too high. In fact, do I even have the option to say about the Champions League? In fact, I only have the options to promise Europa League football, Champions League football, or a title challenge. Um, the right faces, and we can make the Champions League next season. They're happy we're going to be adding to this one. Me too, Manu Kone. We need to add some very good players. Top four. I mean, this season's been fun. I probably should have lived in the moment of this season more and enjoyed it for what it is, because I feel like next year is going to be really, really stressful. Now, before recording today's video, I had a plan in my head for what I was going to do in terms of transfer business, because I was thinking a top half finish is probably a fair expectation. I've got to reconsider everything now, haven't I? Because Gura Jagger, as good as he is, am I willing to spend half my transfer budget on him? I mean, I might be. It might be a case of doing some deals that involve lots of instalments. Um, in terms of players who, if the expectation is to reach the Champions League, I'm happy with, um, there's kind of five players right now that are in the team that I think, yes, you are definitely ready. I look at Ruiz, I think he can do a job for us. I know he bottled it in the cup final against Manchester United, but on the whole, he has been very, very good this year. And against more regular, stronger opposition, I think the shot stopping, the big strength of his game is just going to shine more and more. Um, so, yeah, I think he will be in goal for us. In terms of at centre-back, this might be a little bit surprising, but I'm not sure Omobamadele is good enough. I mean, part of me thinks I should give him a chance, but equally, he's not on massive amounts of money. And what feels like maybe a logical move, at least in my head, is to go with a centre-back partnership next year of Tullio and then move McIntosh into the middle. Now, this is something I've discussed doing for a very, very long time, is moving McIntosh, who's been right back for the last two years, into the middle. Um, I've been training him at centre-back. I think if we just look at things here, he's very, very well suited to the centre-back kind of position. His pace is going to be very good, especially that acceleration um, to cover any errors he might make. I feel like as a more sweeping option, he is very, very solid. Um, I think this is probably the year to move him inside and to try and get proper wing-backs. Speaking of which, of course, this year just gone, we have been playing with Omar Richards at left-back. Now, he'd probably be a good promotion team to the Premier League left-back under other circumstances. With the new expectations at 34 years old, I'm not sure if he cuts the mustard. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fill the gaps of all these positions with players of the quality that I think we need. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I'm now sat wondering how far is this transfer budget and wage budget really going to stretch? Of course, in a centre mid, we've had Manu Kone this year, who I think is good. Um, I think he's kind of a good Premier League centre mid. I don't know if he's a Champions League quality centre mid. I suppose the benefit we're going to have next year is that we're not going to be in any European competition. So as a result, the squad isn't going to need to be rotated quite as much as a lot of the teams in and around us. Of course, that other centre-back this year, or not centre-back, centre-mid this year has been Valdir, who is a very, very good specialist ball-winning midfielder. But for the step-up, I think we might need a slightly better player. I mean, if we look at the scout report, apparently he's, again, a good player for the Premier League. And I kind of agree with that assessment. I think anyone who's three-star in our team, and well, maybe even two-and-a-half-star, probably is, and under any other circumstances, good enough for a promoted team. But with these new expectations, maybe I'm panicking. Maybe I'm being a bit reactionary in the moment. I do feel like we need to change things up. Um, elsewhere in the team, I'm meant to have Middleby in at false nine. I feel like Middleby at false nine is good enough. I know this year he hasn't been necessarily a world beater. I might look at how we play in the final third in terms of the striker role. I do feel like the false nine has really allowed the wide players to excel. You know, the fact that our two highest goal scorers are inside forwards, I think, can be largely attributed to the movement the false nine does to create space for those false nines to move into. So whilst he might not get all the goals Middleby, he is an integral to how we play. Of course, De Silva, he's captain. He's good enough for this level. He is a top quality player. He will be in the team this coming year. Gura Jagger, I've got to make a decision on. Part of me wants to try and loan him again for another year, but I'm not sure Liverpool are going to agree to that. And of course, in the middle, the highest earner at the club, Henier, um, I think he's good enough. 
for where we're at. He's not... I don't know if he's necessarily kind of a title fighting team quality, but at 30 years old, he's some vital experience, very good creatively, very good technically. Maybe went under the radar a tad this year. Got a 7.43 rating with double figures for both goals and assists. Um, he pulled his weight. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the players I'm happy with. In terms of the players on the bench, I think Kaizo, I, I love him. I think he's amazing. I just... I can't see a world where he fits into the team, really. I mean, maybe there's the option to train him to put on the right-hand side as an inside forward. His finishing is always going to let him down a little bit in the role. This year, when we've played him out wide, he hasn't necessarily scored as many goals as the strikers, as, uh, say, uh, De Silva, playing in the same position where Kaizo tends to play. But from a kind of providing and assisting point of view, he is a very good creative player to have. And I think on the bench in the Premier League, he can definitely do a job as that impacts up. It's weird, right? Because I look at players like Severin, Tom Sane, um, Taubi, Omobamidele, obviously Valdir and Kone we've talked about. <sighs> There's a pretty good chance a lot of these players are going to be on the bench. Given where we're at and given where we're going, to kind of sign players of the quality to challenge for the Champions League, I mean, you're looking to spend probably 30 to £40 million pounds minimum, really. You might be able to get the odd bargain where players are unhappy. But I feel like per position... It's not cheap to sign the quality of player that perhaps we need. And whilst the transfer budget is really, really healthy, there is going to be a degree of bargain hunting. Of course, there's plenty of wage budgets. So we can shuffle things around if we so wish. But until we really get into the summer and know what we're dealing with and what players are truly available, it's difficult to make too many plans. I mean, what I would say is we have got a very, very good squad and I'd like to think that next season, if things don't go to plan, if we are just battling in the top half, per se, the ownership would at least give me a little bit of time. And if that isn't going to be the case, we've really, really got to hope that this system that has served us so, so well this year is also quite good. I mean, I don't truly know how, how good this tactic is because we've only taken on Southampton, Manchester United and Leeds with it in terms of Premier League clubs. Uh, I will probably get a plan B and plan C in place over the summer. So if I don't like no, uh, if I don't like what I see, there is stuff to change to. Do you think it's going to be difficult though? Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave things there for today. There is a lot to plan and to think about and to worry about. I would love to know your thoughts for this summer ahead. Where would you be addressing? Are there areas of the pitch that I'm ignoring? Are there players who could do a job for me that I'm just not even considering for the starting team. I mean, worst case scenario, if Goddard Jagger doesn't renew and we can't sign him, I do feel like Severin is a good Premier League-ish quality player. Um, he will be 20 when the new season starts, but still a young talent with lots of ability. Um, certainly the kind of man who could see himself featuring in the first team if I can't sort out the Goddard Jagger situation. Speaking of which, just as, just as a reminder... What would you do? Let me know with this guy. If you have enjoyed today's episode, as always, do drop a like on it. A pretty exceptional season. The year ahead is going to be a very, very different task. I hope you're excited for it. I am ecstatic. It's going to be a fun challenge, a different scenario. I can't think of anything like this that I've ever done on YouTube in terms of a save game before where expectations are so high as a newly promoted team. It's going to be difficult. We'll see how we get on next time. Hopefully when I return, there's a whole new squad with loads of new sexy signings and I look and feel a little bit more prepared than I do now. Until then, have a lovely Monday. I'll see you guys again tomorrow for more. And that's it. It's me, Jack. I'll see you on the next one. Forgot my outro. That's how flustered I am about this coming season. I, 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 just, I can't get words out. They're difficult. They're hard. Right. End the video. Editing Jack. Time out. Cut the... We're, we're done.